Hey team, Chef Eric Gephardt here at Kamado Joe, hanging out again with my good friends at ATBBQ.com. Uh, there are so many Friday, Saturday recipes that are fantastic, but I'm going to implore to your senses, and let's fire up the grill Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and let's do a 30-minute meal together, folks. Today we're going to be doing a simple citrus seared chicken breast. Let's get into the action. Let's chop up some garlic, and this is just gonna be a quick marinade, maybe a 15 minute marinade while our grill is coming to a temperature of 550 degrees. And we'll just chop all this together. You know, if rosemary offends your sensibility, switch it out to sage. You know what I mean? It's just a recipe, right? Just a guideline. Since we're at a high heat, 550 degrees, direct cook, you don't need to chop that garlic too terribly small. That's perfect. Let's season up our chicken breast with a little Cattleman's Grilled Tuscan Steak. I love the granules of this. You've got smaller pieces, larger pieces. So whenever you have that, you wanna make sure you're not seasoning directly on. You wanna pick it up a little bit and let it all fall down evenly. Season both sides evenly. Next, we're gonna sneak both these pieces into a Ziploc bag and we're gonna pound them thin. Now don't overcrowd your Ziploc and don't put your chicken too close to the edge because as it pounds, it's gonna spread and we don't wanna overcrowd our edges there. So two six ounce, four to six ounce chicken breast, perfect for one gallon Ziploc bag. And then I close it a little bit and make sure that opening is not facing towards me. So as we pound, we don't get any splatter. We're gonna use our meat mallet. And remember these breasts taper a little bit. So we're gonna put a little more positive pressure on this end than this end. We're not looking to tear the breast, just even thickness. So notice we've got these great flat pieces here. We've pounded the seasoning into the flesh. Now there were a couple benefits of the pounding there. Uh, we've created an even cooking surface. So one end is gonna cook the same uh, rate as the other. And we've also sped up the cooking process. It's thinner, it's gonna cook quicker. You don't have to worry about overcooking this chicken. There's less guesswork here. It's just boom, boom on a hot grill and done. And increasing that surface area increases the amount of caramelization that we can get. So by pounding it, we've made it more tender. We've driven the seasoning in. We've shortened the amount of time that we need to marinate it because it's gonna have access to all that cellular structure much quicker. And we've provided a better sheet for caramelization, all good things. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of oil in our marinade and then 15 minute marinade and our grill should be up to 550 degrees. Fifteen minutes and we're looking fantastic. You don't want to let it go for much more than that. We're not making chicken ceviche, folks. Our Kamado Joe Classic 3 is stabilized at 550 degrees and we've installed a cast iron grill grate in the divide and conquer system. I'm going to use a little duck fat spray just to give some uh, sheen and oil to our grill grate. That's going to help promote even dispersion of that heat and give us great grill marks. So right on. That's the sound we want to hear. So many chefs don't allow music in their kitchen because hearing is such an important sense in the kitchen. If you don't hear that sear, you know it's not hot enough, you know we're not gonna get the caramelization. The first minute and a half of this cook, we're gonna leave the lid up. I want maximum airflow searing that side of the chicken. Once we flip it, we're gonna close the dome and allow that natural lump charcoal to impart that flame-kissed flavor. Remember, your fuel source is your secret ingredient. I can see the chicken beginning to whiten around the edges. That tells me it's time to flip. And because we've got such high heat, we use that duck fat and we're using cast iron, everything's working in our benefit not to stick to the grill. Beautiful. Let's flip that other piece. Now lid down for another minute and a half. Oh yeah. That citrus is just screaming. I like the sear on that side. Let's use our thermometer probe and make sure we've reached 165. Yep, we're there. I do, I joke, I joke. Every time you cook, you need to touch what you're cooking to build context to ensure uh, for the rest of your life that you know 
where you're going with it. This is firm, this is beautiful. Let's get it to the cutting board. Like I was saying, it is hard to overcook this. We've pounded it, it's just a quick kiss on the grill. It picked up that natural lump charcoal flavor. All those seasonings have been activated with the heat, beautiful stuff. You wanna let this rest for, I don't know, three to four minutes. It's very thin, so you don't have to let it rest as long as you would uh, a larger roast. And then we're gonna slice right down the middle and we can stack as I love to do. And we're just gonna slice across the grain. Remember, we've already mechanically tenderized this chicken by pounding it. We're gonna mechanically tenderize it again by cutting across the grain, making this the most delicious, juicy, fall apart chicken you've ever had. Oh yeah. And that Sean just glides right through. Now that we've got it all on the board and we've increased the surface area even further and revealed some sides that haven't seen smoke, sear, or seasoning, we'll do a little post seasoning with the white pizza mojo. And just a little bit will do ya. I like this because it's got that Parmesan in there and it just brings a whole nother level to this chicken. Uh, you could put this in a taco. You could put this on top of a salad. You could slice it differently and make it into sandwiches. Uh, again, I implore you to do this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Any reason to fire up that Kamada Joe. And that is a stunning bite. Let's do it. Big, bold garlic. Big, bold rosemary. Parmesan sings. Just enough salt. The thing about cooking in a ceramic grill is the juiciness of that bird. Not only did we have all of that heat from the bottom, but the dome was reflecting 550 degrees as well. So we had 360 radiant heat driving that bird to the internal temperature that we wanted versus a bunch of extraneous heat from the bottom rushing around it and drying it out. This is the way to cook chicken on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and bring it to Friday, Saturday. We're not scared, right? This is good stuff. Folks, thanks for hanging out with us today. I wanna to remind you, as always, delicious doesn't have to be difficult.